right. I'm good. If you guys are. Yep. All right. Well, who wants to do the recap? I don't even know if I remember. Something, something. Jorani's getting turned into a tiger. I vaguely mm-hmm. remember. Go for it if you want to. Well, we got a job. Uh, and in that job, we are required to infiltrate a bank gang of slicers that are planning to blow up a dam that would cause a lot of death. That was a lot of profit loss. Mostly the profit loss. Anyways. Uh, in order to do that, we thought we would have to infiltrate their base and get into their operations. And to do that, we thought we would have to turn somebody into a tiger person. And Jirani uh, volunteered. All right. That's most what I remember. Okay. All right. Uh, To add on to that, um, then, as you guys were uh, deciding on what you were going to do, some individual infiltrated your ship. Oh, yeah, that. Basically killed evil, but evil is okay now. Uh, He was... Killed by the crew, the crew that was still on the ship. And I believe, Oswald, you're now digging through some of the gear that he had. Jace implanted a small metal bead-looking thing into Evil's brain. And then she got an interesting message from somewhere. And... Oh, good. I also believe she got a knife, the Psy knife or something like that. Mind blade, yes. That was one of the pieces of gear that he was using, yes. I don't remember if you guys passed it on to her, but if that's what you want to do. I believe we did. Um, I yeah, start, I think you did. Amuses me that Mind blade is just Psy knife passed through a thor- thesaurus. Moving on. Exactly correct. All right, so uh, for the purposes of this, you'll be all back at the ship, uh, ha- having had all this happen. Um, Evil, you just got your communique from uh, in your head from someone, you don't know who, um, sa- telling you that they are coming for you and you will be going home soon, little runaway. Okay. And that's where we'll pick up. So what do you guys want to do? So we spent a while on uh, Jirani figuring out what they were going to become. I think we're all back at the ship, right? That's correct. Okay. Uh, and then Jace and Jirani were going to do the procedure thing and then actually they already started it and then head down to wherever they were um i don't know if the rest of us had something to do other than just waiting because that you have to be a splicer to get in yeah i should be in medical not medical um this whatever room he's situated in there doing the final um Assessment and booster, I think, is what we were doing just before we left. Three rounds of booster shots, uh, which is what those con, or uh, not con saves, but physical saves were. And then you could do it. So you have some time, actually, because you've only done two days, I think. So you get another day. If I remember correctly. Let me find it. Yeah, I think I... I'm only on a save, Yeah, physical two, save. You made like hour eight of 12. Yeah, something like that. Uh, and actually, it's a it's it's a full day. Oh, sixteen. So, yeah. So you guys still have a solid eight hours if you want to use it. If you guys want to just rack out, that's fine. That being said, as you guys are sort of coming, uh, trying to figure out, all right, what's our next move? And Jirani's getting shot up with drugs. Um, evil, you start noticing that not the, the voice that spoke to you, but a different presence is now attempting to probe into your mind. 
looking for surface thoughts. Where are you? What is your next plan? How long are you staying here? Looking for information. You can block that out if you'd like. Yes. <laughs> it will cost you one system strain per hour. Oh, no. Okay, I want to talk to Jace about what we can do then. Like, can he remove the thing he implanted me? Will that help me help them find me less? You can certainly try to remove the implant. Uh, that seems to be the catalyst for them being able to dig into your head like this. Okay, yeah. Jace, I want this removed. <laughs> Captain, I think maybe it'd be better if we just put you to sleep, put you in a coma. Therefore, you can't tell them anything active that we're doing. <clears throat> and then um, you can fight them with your subconscious, which should be stronger than your conscious. But I can't be for asleep forever. Well, we don't know the range of this thing. We're assuming it's probably just this planet or a solar system. Mm. Yeah. So we can make you unconscious, and then when we're doing, we're getting ready, but we need you, we can break you up. Maybe we can even turn it about and get them to go somewhere where we want at a certain time. But if you want me to take it out, it, it's, you know, that's up to you. Are you guys doing face-to-face, -face or are we all in places where we're at right now? I would assume for, we're in your room. Yeah, for the purposes of this, I mean, it's easy enough to talk to each other within the ship. But there's no specific reason you need to be in a specific place at the moment. Oh, Doc, actually, being asleep forever sounds really good right now. <laughs> So you want me to put you out? Please. <laughs> okay, let me go get a mallet. Yeah, Tarani's like <laughs> just shaking and shivering. He's got like he's got like the sweats. I mean, if you think that's the best, it's a suggestion. Guess, yeah. Probably shouldn't do surgery on me again so soon. I would guess might be a bad thing. So. I mean, I guess I could take a long nap if, and then, like, can I wake myself up? Um, that would be a, a, a hypnosis type sleep, um, which is very suggestive, and we don't want them to suggest to tell things, so I would say no. Can you wake me up every so often and ask how I'm doing, like, just in case they're still able to talk to me while I'm asleep? Sure, I can wake you up every day. Yeah. Let's say about every eight hours. Just basically inject you with enough to put you out for six, and you slowly wake up and see how you're doing, and put you back out. Oh, okay, I think that sounds okay. I I don't want them to find me. We can't okay. let them find me. We'll all be in danger, probably. Are they like you? They're they're far worse than me. <laughs> oh, goody! But the, but genetically, they're like you, right? Yes, yes. And why don't we set a trap? And I can I can have some more samples. Oh no! Yes. That, that's all good. <laughs> well, I'm not yeah. sure about that. So let let's do the let's do the sleeping thing, and then once the crew's figured out a way to uh, ensnare them, then we'll wake you up and start the trap. Meanwhile, then, I'll continue to work with my little kitty here. But then they'll find me. Yes, but then we kill them. And then you're safe for a little while, because then they'll just know, oh, they died in that area, so then we just leave the area and go somewhere else. And the uh, really trail will run cold again. Well, we killed this guy pretty easily. Yeah. And he really fucked up if he was trying to do it silently. Because, you know, you made a loud sound when, I, when, when he stabbed you. And it was, you know. Well, anyway, let me put him asleep, and then I'll put you asleep. So let me go get the meds. Okay. I trust you. All right. Uh, I won't make anybody do saves or anything to try to stay awake. Um, but, yeah, you can put them to sleep if you want. Where are you putting them to sleep? Well, uh, the cap will, will put asleep in the med bay so I can keep an, mm -hmm. an eye on her. And then 
I'm assuming he wants to stay in his room, right? Sleep yeah. on the table or something? It, it, I assume that's like a couch. Could be. Good enough. Yep, good enough for me. All right. So we have Drani and Evil asleep. Interesting. Okay. So, the rest of you. You got some time to kill. Um, and I've got a backlog, so I'll be fair. working on that. Um, can I help with that at all? I don't have much to do. I've, I've got a fix skill. You might be able to help, depending on... Uh, let's see. I think there's a thing about helping with maintenance, something like that. Uh, I need to increase the time, but even still, if it's a day per 500 credits, right? Now is what we read on? Yep. Then it's yeah. still going to take five days for you to get your bubble seal done. Oh, no, that's fine. I mean, I've I just been whatever. Um, it's either that or try and, I don't know, do something on the ship. I, I really don't have much. <laughs> so Fair there's, there's not... My, my skill is piloting. <laughs> In that case, <laughs> really help me with your armor. Of... And sure. uh, we'll get it done. Might be good to have you, you know, there to measure and give some input while I'm doing it. Sure, I'll do the bitch work. Yeah. Yeah, all right. So, uh, I think this circles back to Jace in this case. Um, before you need to give Drani his next set of meds, um, what is your upkeep plan for evil? She is out cold. Uh, um, is there anything specific you're doing or just keeping her asleep? Uh, in the med bay, I'll be playing uh, ambient noise for, like, water. So you would be like if she was in the ocean to help make her mind think of an ocean environment. So if they do leak or break through her defenses, they'll see an ocean that her mind is generating. Uh, for a dream, a dreamscape, and then I'll, of course have vitals constantly going. And anytime I see a spike of something, I'll try to, I'll you, basically force wake her up. Are you trying to inception some? Yes. Side people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if if she's thinking of one thing, they won't know what's actually happening. Look, man, so you're trying, trying to like to steal everybody's. <laughs> you're trying to steal everybody's data from their phones. All right, Jace is just trying to steal it from their brains. Yep. Well, fair. <laughs> what's arguably worse on a humanitarian <laughs> standpoint? Eh, our phones are basically extensions of ourselves now. All right, uh, so evil. Uh, you don't know how long it's been, but uh, and Jace, as you're sort of watching over evil and sort of bouncing back and forth between Gerani and evil, making sure they're both breathing at a minimum. Um. Evil, you start to get nightmares of a familiar place, but slightly, they're not all your memories. They're not all your constructs from your mind. A subterranean world, for lack of a better term. Uh, this huge underground cavern with a pyramid in the center, and a city sprawled out stone in, inside of this stone cavern. It goes on for miles and miles and miles. The top of the uh, the pyramid has been cut off, and well, that's a fami somewhat familiar sight. You've seen it before. The part that isn't yours, you start to walk up the side of the pyramid slowly. Now, you've never done that, but this seems more real than fiction in your mind. And as you reach the top, there is a series of four technological 
implements, aiming beams of some kind directly at a smaller pyramid structure, maybe six inches on a side. And you watch as someone ahead of you walks up to it, places their hand on it, and then falls to the ground, sort of is helped away. Not dead, but close. And then another. And then another. Every few seconds. And you can see this endless line trailing back through the cityscape. And then it's your turn. And as you, without any control over yourself in the dream, press your hand to this pyramid, you feel that, that well of psychic energy pulled from you immediately. And you can tell that this small object does something with it. You're not entirely sure what, but part of you, the part of you that isn't you right now, knows it's to keep the world looking dead and barren from the outside. And you fall, and then everything goes black in your mind. And at that moment, you feel a weak attempt to probe into your subconscious once again, but it is significantly weakened at the moment. It seems that being asleep means they only have ab access to your subconscious, not your conscious thoughts. And okay. that's better than nothing. Definitely. And so... Jace, you see tossing and turning from evil, and then stillness after about 20 minutes. Okay, so I'll mark it down and make that as a norm for the dream or the, the people trying to get in. So if anything above that, I you will... You have no idea if people were trying to get in. No, no, I'm using it as a re reference. I'm saying that she's either having a dream or something's going on, but it wasn't severe, so I'm going to use that as a baseline. So if it gets okay. worse than that, I'll wake her up. Okay. All right. So, a few hours go by. Uh, you make progress on the suit, Oswald, uh, with, with some help, and it actually does speed up the process a bit. A bit, but... Um, meanwhile, Jace, it's time to administer the last bit of drugs to, uh, to Jirani. So I assume you probably do. Does he need to be awake for that? Uh, technically no. Okay, then I won't wake him up. I'll just, I'll just inject him. All right. Oh my god. Jirani. We're all fucked. You're still making a, a physical save, though. Sweet. Our crew medic just hit me with another dose. Is there a I'm modifier asleep. button for physical save? I don't think so, no. Okay. Chase is the big bad of this campaign. Yeah. Big is going to be Maybe. the stretch. Okay, but... a little bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, my God. I love God. it when the roles follow Holy the story. I'm... Can I, uh, can I use my thing? What thing? Uh, is that for skill checks? Yeah, yeah the expert thing doesn't just... work for checks. Oh, God, I'm dead, aren't I? No. But... Jace, uh, you step out for a moment to go and quickly circle back and keep eyes on, on evil. And, and you sort of go back just to see how well Jirani took it. Took the uh, the medication. And as you return, you see vomit on the floor. Uh, he ha is in a severe cold sweat. And based on the smell, you're going to guess that he has 
come down with a new symptom, diarrhea. It is not a pretty sight. Well, this is a good plan. Nord's Whoa. downstairs, and I could just hear okay. his laugh all the way up there. <laughs> <laughs> it could be worse. I could be experiencing total organ failure. Yeah. Well, you might be. <laughs> Who knows? I have to wait. Remember, remember when you used to have a stomach? <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. I'll get on. I'll get on the comm. Uh, text or someone. Can I have one of your strong boys come up here? Bring a gas mask. I need to uh, put something in the shower. Not it. And I toss uh, text and <laughs> <at> my filter. <laughs> fucking I just grab it and fucking walk. <laughs> Wait, wait, do you have any gloves? <laughs> there are any fucking gloves back here? I don't know what They're the fuck's going on. Up full vac suit. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay, yeah, I'll just, I'll fucking do this. <laughs> right. You get up like, there, uh, and you like Marty see McFly. very much the same sight. Jirani has, is in, is sweating profusely, uh, vomit everywhere. Am I having um, full body seizures yet? No, no, not that bad. Just, uh, your body doesn't much like the drugs. Let's say that much. God damn, is this boy alive? If he smelled worse, he would be dead. So, let's take care of this. Uh, let me put him in the shower. <laughs> all right, put him in the shower. I don't like how you're giggling in the middle of all this. What the fuck? <laughs> Well, I just like seeing things happen. It's, it's fun. Okay, put him in the shower. Make sure his, his head is outside of the shower stall. So the water just just drenching him. We need to keep his temp down um, and clean him off. So, but you, I'm not stripping him. That's your call. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I ain't stripping him. That, that was not part of this deal. There wasn't even really a deal. I'm just being nice. And I'm regretting that decision immediately. We're going to have a real long talk about whatever the hell's going on with this and your general attitude towards people doing this all over the Hey, he wanted to be in somewhere where he liked to be. This is his room. He decided to stay here. Mm. I have the captain in the other lab. I only have one bed, so... I just drag him out. <laughs> I throw him in the shower with his head out of it, still clothed, and then turn on the fucking water. <laughs> oh, Make God. sure it's cold! All right. Uh, I'll just assume that you took his temperature beforehand, and yeah, his his temp is like in the low 103s, so really not great. Uh, but you would also get, if you were bioscanning or whatever, you would also get, uh, because you know what to look for in this case, uh, the drugs are having the desired effect. Uh, he's just not tolerating them super well. Um, but yeah, you can actually, uh, uh, after taking a small sample and checking it, uh, the DNA has, uh, in many of his cells, have uh, has uh, unwrapped somewhat in the nucleus as if it is ready for an RNA transfer, which is exactly what you wanted. It's just uh, all the side effects have made this a little bit more daunting of a task. Never and how and how much longer do we have for this? Uh, that was his last uh, dose. Uh, you need to wait at least four hours for that last uh, four to eight hours for that last booster to kick in. But right. you guys could haul him down there in the meantime if you'd like. It's really up to you guys how you want to deal with this. Okay, so then what I'll do is I will strip him out of his currently current clothing. All right. Um. And then I'll call Tex again and say I need his help to get him uh, dried off and get him into a medical gown. I just sit there for a real long time thinking about not replying. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll go. This was your guys' plan. <laughs> I just burst into the fucking room. Okay, listen here. This was not my plan specifically. I didn't ask him to accept becoming one of the splicers. I just wanted you to go talk to him and get all in good with them on their side of things and then figure stuff out. Not necessarily have him go undercover. Hey, I was just asked, can I do this? I said yes, and that's that's it. So, oh. 
I very unceremoniously just like flop him onto the couch or whatever the hell it is. Yeah, right. I assume I clean the couch beforehand. <laughs> One would hope. I'll 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 allow it. There, uh, you're patient, and I walk out. <laughs> <laughs> you might also hear Oz chime in from the intercom. I take a full one quarter responsibility for this. <laughs> All right, so All right. I'll dress him, um, and then once he's dressed, I'll ask Tex again or whoever wants to help to get him on a gurney so we can start moving him down to the splicer lab. Damn it, Chase, I'm a pilot, not a doctor. <laughs> the not ship a- ain't moving, boss. Wait, I thought, were you taking them? Because they the need to get already... into the lab. Oh, well, all right, sure. Uh, the bed's already occupied in there, but sure, we'll, all right. Fine. No, not our lab. No, 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 the splicer lab that's farther down. Oh, the, oh okay, yeah, then in that case, I, I thought you were yeah. saying just down the hall. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, you guys will have to take, uh, basically, the med bay is great for, uh short term healing and uh checkups and that sort of stuff and a little bit of uh of Jace's research but if you want to change somebody's fucking genome that ain't happening in that little room okay good good to know yeah let's, it's not let's a make sure advanced med case. Bay. it's not really set up for that sort of thing right, yeah i'll help her uh take him on all right. Okay, I am going to switch to my phone for just a couple minutes, um, but we can continue. So, let me just. All right. So, uh, I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to come up with a vague plan. You guys do know it's in low in the low city. Uh, fortified and there are maybe less than great people in the general vicinity also you're being hunted in general so how do you want to go about getting Jirani down there oh yeah we are aren't we uh i'd probably either have lexi or uh leaf come along just for an extra gun and then which i, I, I don't know just try and book it basically Maybe how both about, of them. Actually, I mean, if, they're not. How about if I dress you up as orderlies? Because I, I don't think I'm being hunted, and the splicers like me. So I'll be there just as my normal self as a doc, and you guys will be my orderlies. Therefore. Well, sure. Oh, no. Evil's the one being hunted. Yeah. But you're yeah. all associates of evils, and um, it's probably, they probably don't really give a shit about you and will kill you if given a chance. Yeah. Oh, speaking of which, As they we attempted need... to do earlier. Speaking of which, um, we need to make a plan for that eventuality. We need to wake Evil up eventually and uh, spring a trap on her pursuers. So we need to worry about that too, guys. It's gonna, you guys are gonna have to worry more about that when I'm dealing with the splicing. So it's gonna take a while. I will also point out it's been about eight hours now. Since you put evil and Jirani. All right, so then I will have to go and wake evil up and see how she's doing. Okay. Um, so I think it's working. I, I'm i having memories of somebody else. So like it, it felt really real, but it wasn't memories of my own. And I did feel them trying to find me but for the most part besides that odd dream thing which explains a lot actually but i'm still slightly confused as to how i could have felt it cap 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 what dream you haven't told me your dream i i saw a place that i'm very familiar with and I mean, it was basically most likely from my home planet, and it explains how the planet is hidden from others. But I'm wondering if that memory was from the person whose this chip came from. That's the only thing I can think of that would explain that. 
as you're explaining this, now that you are awake, your mind goes under assault again as they try to reach in and get him. Doc, they're they're trying to get me again. They're they're coming. They're gonna find me. Okay, Kev, it's okay. It's okay. We're gonna leave in an hour. So the past an the, hour? Yes, we're leaving in an hour. Everything's arranged. Um, we'll be out of the solar system in less than two hours. We're gonna be taking the the quickest route out as possible. So don't worry about anything, okay? I'm gonna put you out and just before we leave, I'll wake you back up, okay? Okay, so you're gonna use less drugs? Yes. Well, I'm gonna put you in the right, same hurry. Sleep I don't okay. want them to find us. Okay, sweet dreams, Cap. Remember, we're leaving in about an hour, and we'll be out of the system in about two hours, okay? Okay. Don't worry. Bye-bye. Sleep tight. You know that's not how that After she's under, <laughs> text goes, you know that's not how that works at all, right? Hey, you know what? If they heard the conversation or gleaned anything while she was going under, then that's what they got. So oh, that's okay. a fair point. Yeah, that's clever. I'll give it that. All right. Interesting. Okay, so what's the breakdown here? Is is evil going with you? Is she not? I think we should have both of them carded, as in like they're going to Yeah, let's take both. And they'll both be on the in the in, in grab beds or stre stretchers, whatever, and the orderlies will be carrying them. And we'll just only do the procedure on one person because that's the only person I have prepped. Yeah, I think that's a terrible idea because that makes us doubly a target and we're going to be the ones that are less defended. So. It's best It's best to have, in this situation, all the eggs in one basket so we have all the guns in one spot. Or you want to take view. the whole crew? Or yes. just... Oh. Mm. And we lock down the ship down... Unless you guys want to guard, and then the skeleton group goes with me to the Spicers. Well, that's what I was thinking originally. Like, everybody stays in the ship where it's fairly defensible, and then... Yeah, defensible with the guy with the side knife coming in and slicing people up. Yes, that was, that was really working. Well, he was invisible, so... If oh, so these guys won't have the same tech? To be fair, they do have the same tech. I would like it, so, you know. That's something. Uh, okay. Not to it. mention, it was fairly expensive. I don't think anyone on the system ought to have more than one of these things, but I might be wrong. Uh, I guess... I will note, if you do leave, that'll leave me with... Uh, best case scenario, uh, a comatose psychic and two people with guns who are a little out of it right now. Well, let's put it this way. I can take, I need at least one person, but orderlies usually go in pairs. So let's do it this way. I will take the less competent with weapons, and you keep the rest. You, I will give you a, a syringe to give the cap if you guys get attacked, so she can be an additional source. But you need to lie to her. Tell her that, you know, the opposite of everything you're doing. So if anything comes through, they will hear that instead. Understood. I now, in the meantime, I just need two strong people. Because I ain't carrying that. Uh, you know, it might be better just to have everyone going on. Or maybe I will, just... I will point out, you do have one sort of gurney, which is the med, uh, the bed in the med bay. Um, I don't know that you have any other mobile beds at the moment. Well, we can do triage. The, the blanket, two poles, time together. You got a hammock, which could be used as a stretcher. So here's the thing about everybody going out, is that then we have no control over the space around us. So it's real easy for them to set up an ambush anywhere, literally anywhere along the route. Just is keeping most people here, then we have control over this space for the most part. True. But if we're in sp splicer territory, they're not going to be very kind uh, to people who are not invited. Yeah, if they see them. Oh, well, we could, when, you, when we shoot at things, people will see it. 
And we're invited. But I agree. So I could go by myself with the, the orderlies. We're going to use the word orderlies. They can leave and come back to the ship while I'm doing the work and then call them when I'm ready for retrieval, I guess. Yeah, I think a smaller crew out there is better. Especially with uh, evil being the uh, the target for these guys. I guess then, should I stay here? Or do you want me to leave the syringe with the gunman? And uh, no, I, I think you can stay here and uh, just keep an eye on on the ship. Make sure nothing gets in when we go. Like we'll just open the door and close it real quick. Hopefully nothing gets in. I don't know. Just try and keep everything as sealed as you can and monitor whatever's going on. Hey, I got an idea. Do we have anything that can disperse smoke or vapor available? The engines? No, 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 no. But like when we leave, because if we leave, the particles of the the Uh, smoke will show any disturbance that comes in after us. So hence disabling their cloaks. You can see them. Uh, I don't know. Do we have like fire extinguishers or anything on this ship? Fire extinguishers? Even powder, like, you know, any type of powder you can put on the floor, you can at least see their footprints on the powder. Okay, at this at this point, uh, Lexi is listening in the corner. She pulls out her sword. I stop anything that come try to come in. If you can see it, Lexi, remember, like, sometimes... I don't have to see it, just have to hit it. All right, that's a fair point, technically. (laughs) But they're quick little... (laughs) So, then then that's good. We'll just put powder on the floor. As soon as she sees a footprint, swing away. Okay. I'm not as good at a Russian accent as she is, but... but... Guess starting to be on comms. I got work to do, and so do you, if I recall correctly. So let's just get this done and hopefully be done with this by sometime soon. Keep in mind, you're only still going to have to do some reconnaissance after the operation, so I'm going to be here a while. I'd like to keep this place as secure as possible. Oh, and I put a thought in the cat's head before I put her out again. They are going to come probably within the hour. Because I told them that we would be out of the solar system within two hours and plan to leave in an hour. So that should give you a window of when to expect them. All right. Uh, In that case, uh, Lexi, just stay at the doors. And if you see anybody, or if you see Tix or Jace, don't swing. If you see nothing or somebody else, Give it a second just to double check and then swing. Okay. All right. I'm getting back to work. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So, uh, you guys load up uh, one bed, or the mobile bed, move evil, I assume. Uh, as you need the gurney. And uh, so if I'm right, that means it's Tex, Leaf, and Evil, along with Jace, going to the Splicers? Uh, Evil? Why would Evil go? No. Or, sorry, Tex, Jace, Jirani, and Leaf going to the Splicers. Um... Do we want to do leaf or leave him? It is a grab bed. You can, you can, it's not hard to push. Yeah, I think we, since evil's the target, I think we leave. Uh, Jace, you got to go. I have this. I'll show off my uh, semi auto. Yeah, that's workable. All right, let's just do the two of us. We'll, We'll leave as much defense on the ship as we can. We'll just try and move quick. How about that? Sure thing. All right, let's do it. Just me and Jace and Jeronny. Okay. So for the purposes of this, and then pull you guys off over here. 
Um, and while we're leaving, I'll give him something to, to allow him to slowly wake up. Okay. Uh, the anti-coma drugs. Uh, you push that into his system okay. um, as you're on your way out. Okay. So, uh, f- uh, as uh, Tex, you drop the, the back door so that you guys can go out. Lexi's in front of you swinging wildly with a great sword. Um, <laughs> and immediately and close leave, the door as soon as we get past. And leave standing kind of back here with the ginormous fucking machine gun. It, basically his minigun. Uh, just waiting. Um, you guys exit. Uh, no obvious troubles whatsoever. Um, uh, on your way out and head down towards the lower city. Uh, Lexi gets back in and Leaf will close the door. Um, they do a quick screen of the cargo bay and and everything. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead. Say Lexi's going to be kind of here-ish. Actually, no, Lexi would probably be up here. And we'll put Leaf here for now. It seems like about where they'd be. All right. Meanwhile, um, you guys continue on uh, through the city to what is essentially a massive service elevator uh, and begin descending down towards the lower city. You know it's about an hour uh, to get to the lower city. Or not to the lower city, but to get to the Splicer hideout. So, um, on your way out, once the doors are shut and you kind of get a second to yourself, uh, Tex and Jace, give me notice checks with wisdom. Mm-hmm. Ten. Nice. Very nice. Six. Okay. Jace, you're focused on Jirani trying to make sure he doesn't puke directly, you know, and aspirate into it on his own vomit uh, as he's in the process of waking up. Tex, you catch a glimpse just for a fraction of a second, and you're pretty sure you see uh, someone duck back around the corner um, as you guys exit, a somewhat familiar individual with a set of what looks like goggles on. But uh, they duck behind what now? Duck behind a corner, a few levels up. Um, okay, basically, so as soon as as soon as you start looking up, you catch a glimpse of them, but they definitely try to get not seen as quickly as possible. Okay, I'll just uh, very quietly say to Jace, "All right, we're being followed by the uh, one with that." Okay, just and business as usual. Just keep your head on the swivel. Yep. I got my, uh, I'm pushing it with one hand, pushing the gurney thing with one hand, and then the other one I've got near where my uh, spikes are. You continue down. Uh, it's about a 20 minute ride to the low city um, via this elevator sort of thing. As is happening. Drani, you feel like shit, but you are starting to come around. Oh, where are we? What's going on? Hey, buddy, just stay still. We're on the way to the Splicer location. I only woke you up enough so you can be awake when we get there. What? Um, yeah, so you slept through all the worst parts. So you seem to be stable, minus having almost every side effect you can possibly have. What? Uh, what happened to me? Uh, okay, Batman. Sorry. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right. It's not. <laughs> Swear to me. No, no, no. It's <laughs> Catman. <laughs> oh, God. 
All right, buddy. Let's. Just, uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna mince words with you. You shit yourself. I cleaned you up. Text here helped out a lot. No, it didn't. <laughs> I just threw you in the shower. Clothes. That's helping. I I can't carry him. Come on. So anyway, you're good. We're on the way to Splicer. Your vitals are fine. You probably feel like shit. Maybe a couple of backtracks for running you over or whatever. Whatever you're used to. But you'll be. You should be fully awake by the time we get there. I kind of reach down to where, like, I would normally put, like, my water bottle and my flask. Where, where's my shit? Where's it? Um, you are in a medical gown because we're trying to make this look as medical-related as possible because people are watching. So, calm. Worst-case scenario, you can take my gun when we need, when we need, Okay. And I just like just fucking pass the fuck out. All right. All right. Uh, the rest of your trip is relatively uneventful. It takes about an hour. You uh, there's some busier streets down in the low city, and you kind of have to be just careful to dodge all the bustling traffic and all. But weirdly, like nobody really gives a shit about what you're doing. Um, at least not really. You might get some weird side eye looks here and there, but nobody really seems to care that much. Um, but eventually you get to what looks like uh, a massive warehouse with uh, sort of pretty tall, eight to ten foot concrete walls, um, and uh, some familiar guards outside. An ox and a tiger. Hello, sexy horned beast and my furry friend. We have an appointment. Can you get the doc? Mm. All right. You know, well, and the ox sort of walks off. That beats any kind of intro I could have tried to do. <laughs> <laughs> There's something deeply wrong with our medic. <laughs> I don't even know if I'd call her I'm a like medic. Doctor, yeah. not a medic. I don't know if I'd call her a doctor. Either. <laughs> our, uh, our our bone saw. Yeah, but yeah, bone saw. Um, mad scientist. Any of those? So, uh, which which one left? The the ox or the the ape? Yeah, the ox. I think ox left. And... Okay, ox. Yeah. So I'd, I'd take a step closer to the to the ape guy and just kind of say quietly to him, "Hey, so uh, word is there's somebody around these parts that's uh, not too friendly with the splicers. Somebody with a hood and a visor. If you uh, if you see him, keep an eye out. It could be dangerous." And just sort of looks at you, like he understands what you're saying. He's just not saying anything back. He just sort of looks at you. Um. And Don't you worry. You kind of, kind of swell, like you know, raise his shoulders and start to look bigger as you get closer. As a very typical silver back sort of moment. I'll put my hand on uh, on your on Texas arm. Can you back up a bit? He he. he they don't like you know being pressured. Or oh, I I understand. Spin. I was just like I just yeah. stepped up to say that, and then I stepped back. I didn't. I wasn't like in his yeah. face. I was just it was a quiet relay. Yeah. From yeah, so, and he, he he looks like he understood. Um, he's just pondering that information a little bit. Um, about five or so minutes later, the ox returns with a kind of skinnier, uh, somewhat long hair, uh, familiar looking to Jace anyway, bespectacled, bespectacled doc. Um, in a white lab coat uh, with what you can now see, uh, Chase, you didn't really see it before. Um, he's got a patch on his left, over his left breast pocket. Um, and it is, you know, the double helix um, uh, for DNA. This is a triple helix symbol. Oh, cool. Okay. And he, uh, he walks up. Ah, you've returned. Well... I see you brought your patient, I believe. 
Yep, and his DNA is ripped open, ready to go. All right. Well, feel free to follow me, and we will uh, get to work. Now, were you planning to do the job, or would you like me to assist or do it for you? You can assist, but since he's going to be my bodyguard, I want to know exactly his... All right. Well, follow me, then. Oh, and, um... Your friend will have to wait where the others did. Oh no, my orderly's going to go back to the ship. Oh. I'll call him when we're ready, when when we're when ready to go back. Are we still outside of the the main door? Yes. Well, I'd I'd be happy to take him inside just to the, the first room, but then I'd be happy to part ways from there. I suppose if it's just transport, you can. All right, follow me, and um. He sort of leads the way. As you're going, Jace, you're keeping an eye on the dock, but also just making sure Jirani... And Jirani, you're starting to come too proper this time. Um, so you're seeing everything else, although it's slightly blurry. Uh, it, you know, you're a bit Probably groggy like, from sleeping for about 16 hours. Or well like being in a coma. Like a meat grinder or something. Yeah, yeah, that would be an ap a somewhat apt description. Uh, actually, it feels more like you're just physically on fire everywhere, outside and inside. Um, so, uh, as you're going, um, Tex, I'm going to use your previous notice check as sort of, uh, as a baseline here. You hear, overhear some less, what I would call, like, less, uh, majorly spliced individuals speaking in a group near somewhat near the door. Um, and you pick up a little bit of info as Jace is a little bit distracted and Jirani is in no condition to be listening to anything. Um, you hear talk of the his a little bit of history. Not much stands out to you uh, sort of talking about guild business or whatever, um, or not really guild business, but, you know, gang business. And then, um, you hear a few others speaking about a couple of, uh, individuals you assume in the, uh, in the Splicer gang. There's a, there's a small group of what looks like, uh, Younger, probably five to twelve year old kids who are not spliced, speaking to one uh, or uh, being taught to by a spliced individual who seems to apparently been have been spliced by with some kind of uh, canine, I guess. You're not sure if it's you know your typical dog or if it's like a wolf or anything, but it definitely looks a lot more doggish. Um, and he, you pick up a couple of, a little bit of what he's saying, talking about how the first people that were spliced were spliced as a punishment, but you don't really have a whole lot of time to, to gather any info in that, you know, as you guys enter into the building and drop off Jirani inside the door. And that was, he said, um, people he spliced, right? No, uh, the first people that were spliced oh, okay. were spliced as a punishment. And that's you get you got a little bit uh, along those lines from this dog person, I guess, speaking to younger children who are not spliced. Okay, gotcha. Um, but you get guys get into. The interior of the warehouse and this this huge place there are multiple they sort of look like back to tanks from star wars uh the thing that uh luke was floating in uh in very uh, sort of strewn across uh or you know in various places along the floor um with very interesting sort of human animal hybrids uh floating in them uh, there is a little ways away a uh, a few chairs set out with large computer banks and what looks like 
uh, cold storage areas for various uh, uh, reagents and things. Uh, probably another 50 to 100 feet in deeper into the room. And that's when the doc sort of turns back to to you, Tex, and says, well, thank you for your service and dropping this off. Uh, I believe this will... We will call you when it is uh, complete. If you wish, you will. You can stay here or you can go back to your ship. I'd be uh, happy to wait here as additional security for our doctor here to uh, then be able to return to the all right, there's a waiting room a bit, a little ways away. It's better if we don't have any distractions during our procedures. Of course. And uh, just as a as a note, I did notice somebody that was uh, kind of snooping around outside. I don't know if your security is concerned about such things, but they seem to be a especially shady character that was given a side eye to this place. Interesting. Sort of a hood and visor sort of get up. All right. Well, if they try anything, I'm sure that, uh, well, it won't go that well for them. Of course. Good luck with the procedure. And I'll head to the waiting room. All right. Back and, uh, yeah, So you exit, you cross, uh, you're led across the courtyard where you see um, that it looks like uh, that small group of kids is sort of broken for recess, for lack of a better term. Um, as they're all playing in the dirt and uh, throwing uh, a couple like baseballs back and forth and all that. Um, and you're led to sort of the out towards the outer wall of the compound. There is a there are a few rooms with uh, tables and chairs and some snack foods, for lack of a better way to put it. Um, and uh, you're given leave to just hang out in there until they're done. All right. So is there anybody else in the room like watching me or is it just I just got left um, in the waiting room? You're kind of left in there for the most part. There are definitely like there there's a couple of windows that look out into the sort of courtyard area. And mm -hmm. you can definitely see that there's there's a couple of larger uh splicers, one that looks kind of like a warthog looking guy and one that looks like he's a maybe part rodent of some kind, but looks kind of terrifying. Um, that are somewhat conspicuously hanging pretty close to the door and keeping a, a vague eye on it, just in case. Okay. Uh, but they're not making any active move towards you or anything like that. It looks more like, you're not one of us. We're just going to, you know, be safe. Sure. So, uh, meanwhile, um, Jirani, you are now mostly awake uh able to look around and you see the same thing the interior of the darkened the dark interior of this large warehouse and several individuals floating in tanks and uh as jason this other doc sort of pull you off the bed and put you into one of these sort of medical chairs and uh tie down your wrists and ankles and uh sort of like a belt across your waist oh that's Nope. I'm just gonna like jerk a little bit. But then remember, oh right. I literally agreed to this. Mm-hmm. Alright. So Calm down, my friend. Calm down. This'll be we'll put you to sleep in a little bit. Alright. So uh the other doc pulls a uh a blood sample to just confirm that you know, the drugs have taken their effect and everything is good to go. About 20 minutes later, um, he has collected most of the reagents that you'll need. Uh, yeah, it's procedure time. And you know it's going to take a couple of hours because it's an initial procedure. It takes a while to uh, inject all the, uh, at all the right, right points to make the transformation work. So, I'm assuming you knocked Jirani out again? Wait, yes, by now he would be Jason, back. what are we... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Texas is just like, when this is first starting, he's just like, 
I wonder if I'm going to leave with Jerani or if he's just going to be goo by the end of this. <laughs> now is when we're going to find out. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, please. I'm in this case, I'm going to give you uh, a heal check with a plus three modifier. And that comes from having the dock there and having specialized every, you know, uh, a specialized place to do it. Sorry, was that Jace supposed to be rolling? Yep, that's Jace. Oh, sorry, I have to do that yeah. for him. What was it that I was supposed to do for him? Heal check with intelligence. With a plus three um, modifier. Intelligence. Plus three. Oh, I have to get up. <laughs> I can do his mouse from my computer, but I can't do the keyboard. <laughs> no worries. All right. It's pretty solid. So the initial transformation takes place, and... As Jirani is dumped unceremoniously into one of the tanks to allow transformation to grow. I believe it was White Tiger was the plan. Um, yeah, uh, it is. Uh, Jace is given time to chill out. Tax, you're starting to get a little bored. It's Jesus been a couple Christ. of hours. Uh, after a couple of hours, were the kids still out playing baseball? Uh, they would have gotten back to you. get the idea that this is sort of like a sort of impromptu classroom sort of deal. Okay. Um, but they would have gathered back up after maybe 30 minutes or so to work out, you know, all the, all their energy and so they can learn again, I guess. Okay. Um, I gotcha. Yeah. They would have gathered back up and and it looks like uh the the splicer ha has a large sort of uh what well, looks like a handwritten book of some kind like it looks like a a notebook that uh they're reading out of but it's really thick it's like twice one of those like five subject notebooks um and uh he seems to be reading out of it um to the to the kids you can see this is about 50 to 100 feet away from you over towards uh, towards the main building, sort of just in the shade seems to be the spot that they picked. Um, but you can see it from the window. Okay. Um, if at all possible, I'd like to actually have the door open, just kind of like, you know, cross my arms, lean up against the door frame, just to like look out in the courtyard, just mm -hmm. keep an eye on both the roof and then also maybe try and hear something. Okay. It's not, I mean... They, uh, after you've sort of proven that you're not going to go fucking berserk, um, or anything, um, you know, you open the door and, uh, one of the splicers tasked with guarding you does come up to you and says, why, why do you open the door? Just getting some fresh air, my friend. I thought I'd, uh, enjoy the beautiful day out here. He sort of looks around. All right. Just stay where I can see you. Certainly. Thank you for your uh, attention. Don't try to run off. No, of course I... not. I'm waiting for my friend to be done. Good. If you try to run off, I have to put your head in the ground. I understand. Thank you, and keep up the excellent work. And you're just to point out, you're talking to about a seven and a half foot tall, like half warthog man. Sure. And you get the thought that he could probably do that. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but people are people, too, man. 